Genesis chapter number 7. Only going to read a couple of verses. We'll begin reading verse number 5. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. So what's that tell us? Well, it tells me that Noah was obedient, one, which, what did Samuel tell Saul? Obedience is greater than sacrifice. Okay, but Noah did what God told him to. Noah was 600 years old when the flood came upon the earth for, you know, it rained 40 days and 40 nights. God broke up the waters of the deep, and then when the waters went away, everything looked like it does now. Okay, well, some people have questioned, well, hey, how in the world did God send all them animals from Africa into a boat that may, not, may or may not have been attached to Africa? Or the things from North America, how'd they get over there to the Middle East, if that's where Noah lived? Well, pretty easy. Didn't look like that before the flood came. Obviously, everything was connected, because everything got there. Right, well, Noah's 600 years old. Remember that. Okay, well, if we were to go back to chapter number 6, and we see that, you know, it came to pass that, you know, God eventually gets to the point that he, it repented him that he had made man, because their thoughts were continually wicked. And we know that in the last days, it'll be as the days of Noah, where a sign of the times that the Lord's getting ready to come back is that the thoughts of the people in those days will be as in the day of Noah, continually evil. Okay, well, look in verse number 10. Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay, now, verse number 8, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. It's a great verse. What do you, what do, you do with those people that say, well, grace is a New Testament thing? What do they do with that verse? Right, we live in the grace age, but God's always had it. God's always shown it. Okay, but, verse number 9, he's got three sons in verse number 10, but these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Now later on we find that Abraham was known as the friend of God. Before this we find that Enoch, he walked with God and one day God just took him. Okay, and a different lesson for a different day. I believe that Enoch is going to be the other prophet in the end times of the book of Revelation that's sent back with Elijah. But why do you say that? Because those are the only two guys that I ever find that didn't have an appointment with death. But the Bible does tell it it's appointed unto men wants to die. And the book of Malachi, Matthew, and Mark all tell us that Elijah is going to be coming back one day before the second coming of the Lord. Not the rapture, but before he lands on the Mount of Olives, splits it wide open, and battle Armageddon. Okay, Elijah is going to be coming back. I believe that Enoch What's the other one? Well, if Enoch walked with God, Noah walked with God, that's a pretty good testimony for Noah. Okay, but look with me, if you will, in chapter number 5, verse number 28. I know, it's not usual to go backwards, but just follow me here. Verse number 28 of chapter 5, And Lamech lived in 182 years and begat a son. And he called his name Noah, saying, the same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah 590 and five years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Lamech were 770 and seven years and he died. And Noah was 500 years old and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So, we find out the age that Noah was not when he had all three of these kids, because, you know, that doesn't work out. I mean, it at least takes 27 months to have three kids, and that's, you know, if Noah really wanted to punish Mrs. Noah. That, that wouldn't, be, wouldn't be a happy house. I promise you that. Okay, but by the time he was 500, is the way that I read that. I could be wrong, Brother Allen, but it doesn't specify. But I believe by the time Noah was 500, he had three sons. And I believe that there's at least a little grown because they were supposed to help him build the ark. You don't have toddlers out there helping you work on an ark. Now granted, he built it for 100 years, so they could have grown into it. He may have been blueprinting for a while. I don't know. But, that being said, Noah was 500. Well, why is that important? That's when God came to him in the next chapter. With that, go Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Noah's 500 years old when God speaks to him. He says, hey, it's going to rain. 
Build an ark. This is how you build it. Okay, well, that may not mean much on the surface, but why 500? Why 500? Brother Duck, why 500? You asked me the fish question. Why 153 fish? Why 500? Why not 400? Why wasn't it the will of God for Noah to be younger? So that he'd have more time after the ark to populate the earth with his descendants. Why not? Five, you know, 450. Why not 510? Why not? Well, I got a pretty good, you know, supposition about why that might be. Well, look with me if you will. In verse number 30. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah. 590 and 5 years. Well, what's that mean? Noah would have been 595 when his father died. Flood came when Noah was 600. Now, if we were to go back to chapter number 6, that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and Noah's testimony was that he was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. That's why Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But there's no exclusivity in that verse. It says that the thoughts of the world were evil continually. But that's not talking about those that followed after God. So why 500? Because God knew that it was going to take Noah 100 years to build that ark. He also knew that Noah's daddy was going to die when Noah was 595. Why 500? Because God wouldn't destroy one that had done and followed after and been obedient to everything that God told him. God never punishes those. God never subjects those that follow and are obedient to God to the wrath or judgment of God. In fact, what do you think the rapture is going to happen in the church? Because God will not suffer his children to go through the great tribulation. It is a time of hardship. It is a time of great pressure, of great trying. And God says, come up hither, y'all don't need to be there for that. He told Noah, get in the ark, you don't need to be there for that. He said, don't even worry about shutting the door. I got that taken care of for you. But see, Lamech, that's Noah's daddy. I believe that, no, you know, Lamech was blessed. I mean, but Sammy and I talked about this on Wednesday night in the car on the way back from Owenton. Anybody know what the number seven in numerology in the Bible is? Completion. How old did Lamech live to be when he died? 777. You can't tell me that's not a blessed number, Amen. Brother Sammy. God saying he lived a complete life. Amen. Now granted, Lamech's dad, Methuselah, he lived to be pretty old too. But, Lamech, I believe he was a blessed man. Believed that he lived the life that God wanted him to live. Well, why do you say that? Well, one, he names his son Noah, which means rest. Right? Why? He's saying, I just got a feeling down in the gable end of my soul that God's going to use this one to bring rest to us. To bring rest to the rest of our generations. Well, why? Well, in verse number 29 of chapter 5, he says, he calls his name Noah, saying, The same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had, hath cursed. Well, that tells us a few things about Lamech. One, he knew why they had to toil and work the earth in order to live. Somebody had told him about Adam and the garden and how once sin entered into the world, that's when the Lord had to curse the earth. Because sin had entered into the world. That's why they had to toil and make things come up out of the ground. Because according to the word of God, in the Garden of Eden didn't have to work. It was the exact way that God wanted it to be. The trees bore fruit without us having to tend to them. Everything in the garden was exactly as God. But in order to have, right, what does the New Testament tell? Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. You must sow to reap. Not because God is a cruel taskmaster, but because of sin. Otherwise, it all would have been provided in a perfect environment where we got to walk with God in the cool of the day. But see, Lamech knows that. He's saying, we have to work because of man's disobedience. So one, he knows his, at this point, spiritual history. Granted, we're five chapters in. But a lot's happened in them five chapters. There are a lot of epochs there. 
But I mean, you go and study it out. Noah lived to be 70 when Enos was still around in the family tree. Well, who's that? That's Adam's grandson. That's Seth's son. If Noah was alive and could have gone back and heard, hey, this is what my granddaddy told me. Blamick, who's even younger than him, you go back and say, he's closer to Adam. But see, again, in the Old Testament, there are different periods of time. Now, we know that Job is the oldest book of the Bible when it came to the, t the date when it was written. Okay, we know that. We also know that once Moses leads Israel out of Egypt, that that's called the, you know, with the tabernacle and everything. When they're in the wilderness, there are no more personal priests when it comes to the people of God. There are the Levites that were the priests. They would make the sacrifices. They would go into the house of God and put the blood on the mercy seat. You are no longer responsible to carry out those practices on their own. Well, what did Job do? Job went out and made sacrifices daily for him and all of his house. Right? Well, what did Abraham do? Well, Abraham did the same thing. He went out. Right? The story of Jacob and Esau. Why was it so important that Esau sold his birthright? Because that birthright gave him a double portion because not only was he the new head of the household, he also had to become the spiritual leader for the family. He was responsible for the spiritual direction of the family. And he said, I don't want the responsibility of being the one that goes to God for the rest of our family. That's the way that it was before. So that's why a lot of people say that Job and lived in the time of Abraham or sometime before Israel was taken away into captivity. Right? Well, would have been the same way here. How do we find that Adam learned about the ordinance of sacrifice? God taught him. Well, how did Abel learn it? Adam taught him. When Adam went off of the scene, who was in charge? Seth. When Seth went off the scene, who was in charge? Enos. So as Noah's coming up, who's his spiritual leader? His father. Who's the one that went out and made sacrifices unto God? for the sin of their family, Lamech. Who taught Noah how to sacrifice, Lamech? So if Noah, in chapter number 6, was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God, Lamech was partly responsible for that. Now, the Bible says that Noah was perfect in his generations, that he walked with God. But it doesn't say that about Lamech. But again, there's no exclusivity there. This sentence tells us why God chose Noah. Well, why didn't God choose Lamech? Because he knew Lamech wouldn't make it to the rain. He knew that Lamech, although he walked upright, I mean, to borrow language from the book of Job, he was a perfect man, an upright man who feared God and eschewed evil. I believe the same could be same said about Lamech. But Lamech was around for 95 years while Noah was building this ark. God didn't come to Lamech and say, hey, it's going to rain. He heard it from Noah. So with that in mind, I just want to teach you on this morning, if you never see the rain, if you never see the rain, we find some things by inference about Lamech on what he did after he heard it's going to rain. Now, I firmly believe that Lamech didn't hold any ill will towards Noah because God chose Noah. I believe he's happy for him. He's saying, you know what, Noah? I know you walk with God. Enoch walked with God. God did something special for him. We still haven't figured out what happened to him. We just know that God took him one day. He said, I got a feeling that God's going to do the same thing for you. Something similar. And one day God took Noah, put him in an ark. And he and his children and their wives and his wife only ones that got off of that ark they were the only ones that knew what God had planned for you know the future because they saw it with their own eyes nobody else knew but see Lamech didn't get to get in the ark Lamech firmly believed did everything by the book well there wasn't a book at that point but did everything as God had commanded Adam and it had been faithfully passed down because if it hadn't been Noah wouldn't have been able to learn 
what God said faithfully and accurately. And as a result, God wouldn't honor Noah's partial faithfulness. Because partial faithfulness is still holy disobedience. So that being said, we're going to talk about Lamech. Lamech never got to see the rain. There may be times you're doing exactly everything that God wants you to do. But you not, may not make it to the rain. You may not get to see the flood. You may not get to see God sending the animals in two by two. You may not get to hear God shut the door of that ark. But for 95 years, Lamech was still around. After Noah heard it, it's going to rain. But he never got to see the rain. All right, well, first thing, if we never get to see the rain, don't lose faith. We don't find that Lamech, after he heard it, it's going to rain, went out and started living like the world. He had already lived over 600 years at that point of a life that God wanted him to live. He said, oh, it's worked this far. I'm just going to keep doing it. In fact, he didn't know when it was going to rain. I believe Lamech went out every day and said, well, Lord, no, we're getting pretty close on that boat. Is it going to rain today? Is it going to rain tomorrow? Well, see, there are a lot of times in our life we are co-laborers in Christ. Yeah. Fitly framed together in the body of Christ. He's there, we're the body. Well, some of us, I mean, we have that banner back there. Those were people that labored, that gave themselves over to the work of God. That invested themselves wholly into the house of God, the people of God. But when the Lord shows up around here, certainly it goes to their account. When they stand before the judgment seat of, uh, not the judgment seat, the uh, judgment seat of Christ. Not the great white throne of judgment, judgment seat of Christ. It'll be given to their account. That'll be gold, silver, and precious gems. Because they invested, they labored for the things of God. Why do you think God mentioned Lamech? as a testimony of the fact that no one knew what to do because Lamech taught him. Bizer mentioned that Lamech lived 777 years to show that he lived a complete life in the eyes of God. But see, every time we do have a service like last Sunday morning when God just shows up, those people didn't get to see the rain. You may be laboring. You may feel a thunderstorm a coming. God may tell you, hey, I give you this burden so that one day he can pour out the rain. But you may not see it on that day. You're laboring for something that maybe you may never see. Don't lose faith. Well, if I don't see it, God's not going to rob me of anything. God doesn't know me anyway. I serve him because I love him. But see, if the rain is coming, that means somebody needs it. Noah needed the rain. Or else, one, he'd have been a liar because for a hundred years he's preaching, it's going to rain. And God wouldn't tell you something in order to make a liar out of you. But second, Noah needed the rain because he couldn't do what God wanted him to do without the flood making everything new. He couldn't be who God wanted him to be if he didn't build that ark. I dare say, if Noah didn't build the ark, God would have found somebody else to do it. But who? Slim Pickens. Granted, God's God. He could have started all over again. He could have done whatever he wanted to do. He's God. But see, Lamech saw Noah working on that boat, and he's saying, well, Lord, I hope it is today. But he also says, if it isn't, I still love you. Lamech wasn't so focused about the rain. He was just focused on the one that did send the rain. For 95 years, he's out there, and I'm sure... Old Slewfoot came up and said, Well, why didn't God pick you to build that boat? And Lamech said, I don't know, but it don't matter. I'm just glad that by some way I can be a part of this. I may not be the one to get in the boat, but I'm the one that taught the one who built the boat how to love God, how to walk with God, how to serve God. He's saying he wouldn't have been able to build that boat if I didn't tell him that. He's saying, I've got some things invested in that boat even though I may never get in to be able to get in that boat he's saying it may not be my blood sweat and tears that went into it but I've invested in that boat and so he's seeing that boat built he's not getting jealous not getting envious he's not worried about what tomorrow holds 
When he lays his head down on his pillow and he's saying, well, if God told me not to build it, am I going to die in the flood? What David said, never saw the righteous forsaken. Again, we've already been over that God will not punish those that are obedient to him. So Lamech just said, well, God's got it all figured out. I'm going to keep living for God. Yes, now, I can't prove this, but I believe that as Noah's out there building that ark, maybe some days Noah's voice gets a little hoarse. Here I had them, Brother Jerry, you just preaching, and the next day you're like, eh, it's a little tight in here. I can't get as loud as you used to. I believe Lamech came by and said, hey, take a break. I'll preach to him today. It's going to rain. How do you know? Because God told him. Can't prove that. But I do believe he's just as invested in that ark as Noah was. Maybe not physically. Maybe not in his labor. Because God told Noah to build the ark. But I believe that as he's seen this thing go up, his faith never wavered. He wasn't concerned about what tomorrow hold or held. He's just saying, man, God, that's a, that's a good looking boat. Granted, he'd never seen a boat before, but he says, you know what, God? That's how a boat should look. I believe he's praising God every day for the fact that he chose to use his son. He's saying, Lord, I know you didn't have to choose anybody. You could have started this thing all over again, destroyed the earth and made a new one. He's saying, but I'm thankful that you saw fit to choose somebody that honored you and loved you to carry on the torch for you. But second, don't lose faith. Also, don't get jealous. We've already covered it. Lay, get and lay his head down and say, why him? That's the, he doesn't know as much as I do. i got more gray hair than him. I've seen more than Noah's seen. I remember a time when it wasn't quite as wicked as it is today. I can go back. I'm closer to the Garden of Eden than Noah was. We don't find that. I believe he's out there supporting him every day. On the days when Noah's hammered about the last peg that he can hammer into that ark, or he's painting that tar or the lacquer on the side of it to make it waterproof, and his arms feel like they're about ready to fall off, I believe Lamech came by with a glass of lemonade for him. Said, hey, don't give up. Just keep going, Noah. Take a break. Come down, get you some lemonade, but keep on going. Why do you believe that? I believe that because Lamech knew if God told you that, God needs it to get done. Maybe Lamech says, you know what, Noah? I'll take your stuff into town and I'll sell it today for you so that you can spend more time on the ark. Not getting jealous. Why? Because if he got jealous, God would have let him die in the flood. But he didn't. He got to reach the full number of days that the Lord had appointed for him to live. He had reached that completion. But what's that mean? It means that at no point did he start asking God, well, how come I didn't get to build the ark? Do you understand how much legwork and prep work went into the ark being built? How many men had to be faithful throughout the years? Keep what God told them. Didn't have the Holy Ghost. Didn't have the written word. Didn't have any of it. They's living off a of word of mouth. But from Adam down to Noah, it was instilled in men, certain men, that they should live as God had commanded them when they left the garden. All the ridicule and everything else going around in the world, no, at no point did Lamech start chucking stones at Noah. At no point did Lamech walk onto the ark and say, hey, I'm building me a room over here. At no point did he say, you know what, Noah? you got to take care of your own sacrifices. I'm not doing yours today. So what if God chooses to use somebody? If I don't get to see that flood, maybe God's going to send another one over here in my life. So what if it rains down in St. Lucia at Ambassador Baptist Church? If it rains there, that means it can rain here. You do realize that, you know, that God's... Same yesterday, today, and forever. He's no respecter of persons. If he does it for them, the only thing that that says is that they were in a position to receive it. If it rains somewhere else, I should ask myself, Lord, is there something that's causing it not to rain here? Lamech knew that he was right with God. So when God told Noah to build the boat, Lamech knew, I don't need to build the boat. Maybe God's going to let me get on that one. Maybe not. 
Maybe God's going to tell me to build a boat. It's going to be a smaller boat. Maybe it's just going to be for me and Mrs. Lamey. I don't know. But he does know that God's going to take care of him. He's saying, well, if the rain never comes, how was the earth watering that day? The dew of the earth. Came up, he's saying, well, if, it, if I never get to see rain, because he didn't know what rain was. He'd never seen it. He said, if I don't get to see rain, this has always worked for me. God's always given me the water that I needed. At no point did he take it out on Noah because God sent rain to Noah and not to Lamech. And, let's be honest, we're all human. At some point, we've thought, why them? Whether it's somebody that we know in church or somebody that claims to be a Christian or somebody just in the world, Lord, why? Because it rains on the just and the unjust. But when God says rain on the just, don't criticize the just. They weren't the one that sent the rain. And first off, why are you looking at them? Should be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. But when God does for others, it's not a reason for animosity. No, I should be happy for them. God's doing something for them. That means that, well, first off, if you read and you believe the book, God's always doing something. But just because it manifests over there, that doesn't mean that God's not going to send it over here. Lamech knew. God wants me to build a boat. Maybe it's not going to take as long to build, so he hadn't told me to build it yet. I believe he was excited. He said, wait a second, God actually spoke to you, Noah? He said, wait, God came down and gave you instructions on how to build a boat. First off, what's a boat? But second, God talked to you? He's saying, I've always wanted that. But he's saying, if God spoke to Noah, he could speak to me. He's saying, I remember that Enoch used to walk with God. God used to talk to Enoch. He's saying, he did that for you? I believe he's excited for him. But I also believe it gave him hope, encouragement, spurred him on. When God does something for somebody else, great. It means he's not done around here. He's still got things to do. But even if I don't see it, I'm going to keep working alongside those that may see it. Instead of getting jealous, I'm just going to link up with them. Say, hey, whether I see it or not, I'm going to do everything I can to help you make sure that you do see the rain. Because if God's going to see it, or send it, I want you to see it. Because if I don't, God knows that I didn't need it. But if you do need it, I want to make sure you get all of it that you need. Why? Because Lamech knew that Noah was going to be the one that carried on the teachings and the doctrine, if you will, of what it is to live for God. He said, well, if God does send a flood, that means somebody's going to have to teach them. He says, I know that's going to be Noah. He says, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that Noah gets through to see the rain. He said, I have no doubt that God's going to take care of me in the rain. But on them days, instead of getting jealous, I'm just going to help them. Which brings us to the third point. Even if you never see the rain, encourage those, edify those that do see it. Yeah. Study this thing out. Go from front to back and find me an example where someone, God was using them to do something, and those that lashed out against them, got jealous at them, tried to end them, where God didn't punish those people right. or remove them from the situation. Then study it out and show me those that sometimes people that weren't even right with God, God would use them to help edify and encourage those that would see the rain. If I don't, God will find somebody that will. Where did Noah get all the gopher wood? Maybe he had to buy it. Maybe he went out and he hacked it down. Maybe Noah's sitting there one night and he's thinking, well, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to buy all that wood. I've used all the gopher trees that we own. I need some more. Or maybe Noah had to go learn how to do a little bit of craftsmanship. He's saying, I know how to take a board and put it into another board. How in the world am I going to lift this thing up over my head and put it down over there? Maybe he had to go learn a little bit of engineering. Maybe when he's sitting there trying to figure out, well, who's going to teach me? Lamech says, I know a guy that can do that. 
Let me put you in contact with him, Noah. Maybe as he's sitting there going through the pocketbook trying to figure out where to go for where it's going to come from, Lammy come by and say, hey, uh, I, I don't know why, but I got a little extra change in the wallet this week. Take this and go buy you some gopher wood. I don't know. We just know that Noah was faithful for 100 years to preach righteousness and to keep building the ark. But nowhere in there do we see that Lamech not only became a hindrance, but didn't even do his best to help him. You're telling me that somebody is right with God, is doing everything that God wants them to do, they're not going to want to be involved in the thing that God's doing? They're saying, no, it doesn't matter if I don't get to see it. I want to make sure that, I, you know, when it does come, this thing is done. You need an extra set of eyes, I'll help you inspect. You need an extra set of hands, I may not be able to get up there and climb around the boat with you boys, but I may be able to take some of that rope and weave it in together so that when you put those two pieces together and you put that tar in there, that it seals up nice and tight. I might be able to weave some of that rope. Might be able to file down some of them pegs so that you can drive them in. I'm, I might be able to just take a plane and make the handrail smooth so that you don't get a splinter. Whatever it is. I believe Lamech was on board. We don't ever find that he got to step inside of it. That he got to see what God was going to do. But I do believe he was standing outside watching that thing get built every day. That when people come out and they start ridiculing Noah, he might stand up and take up for him. Say, hey, boy heard from God. You ever heard from God? Shut up. Keep going. He says, that's my boy. He's not crazy. I raised him. I know crazy and that isn't it. People come by, what's rain? I don't know, but God does. I believe when Noah couldn't preach, I believe Lamech was right there helping him. Yeah. Believe when the devil had no, Noah, you know, at his lowest, let me just come by, tap him on the shoulder. Help him along to the next day. Maybe when Noah's boys, I mean, could have been an injury on the job. I believe if one of them was down, let me say, I not as surprised as I used to be, but I could still do something. You want know, if you're in the middle of something, I'll run down, I'll get the supplies for you. I'll run down into town, make sure that you got the food that you guys need today. Why? Because you're doing God's work. Yeah, but God didn't tell you to help. Nobody didn't tell me not to. And if he opens the door, I want to be invested in what God's doing. Because if Lamech got jealous, if Lamech started asking, why not me? He wouldn't have made it to 777. God turned some over to the destruction of the flesh so that the soul might be saved. That root of bitterness that Brother Sammy preached about. If you don't get all of it out, it's going to keep coming back. We never find that Lamech ever had any bitterness, any jealousy, any of that green monster. But see, in all of this, Lamech never got to see the rain. He never got to land on Mount Ararat. He never got to walk out and see the new world that God had made. He didn't get to see the time that Noah kept sending out, you know, them goofy ravens. Then one day he sent a dove out and then came back with a thick branch. But just because Lamech didn't see it, it didn't mean that Lamech didn't believe it was going to happen. If you really believe that Jesus is coming back, it doesn't matter who God's using, you just want to be involved in it. You want to get out there and reach him. I believe Lamech had friends. He's going to them and saying, hey, it's going to rain. They're saying, not you too. You, you believe what Noah's been preaching? He says, oh yeah. I believe it. Because he's saying, I know what God did to Cain. I know what God did to Adam and Eve when they were disobedient. He says, I believe that God's reached the fever pitch and he's saying, no more. And he says, I don't know when it's going to happen, but I believe it's going to happen. Because see, the thing is, maybe Lamech couldn't have survived seeing all those people not make it into the boat, which is why he only made it 95 years. I don't know. But God said, he's going to die five years before the rain starts. But I believe for 95 years, he was just as involved as he could be.
as God would let him be. Because he still had duties of his own. He still had to take care of his life. But I believe every moment that he had, he was over at Noah's house. Hey, boy, how's the ark coming? But we had a hard time getting his peace in today. Had a hard time coating this thing. Trying to get all this tar up on the outside and on the inside of the boat so that it doesn't leak. Well, how do you know the right way to do it? Nobody had ever done it before. Well, I'm just, just have faith that it's going to work. Or maybe Noah's sitting there and he's wondering, how in the world do you tar something that high up in the air? And he says, I got this idea. It's called scaffolding. He's like, man, I got this idea. You hang a pulley up there, you put string through it, tie a bench to it, you got a floating chair. Tie it off, you're good to go. But everything that he could do, I believe Lamech offered it. Well, what's the point? Of? He never got to see the rain. But I do promise you this, he got to enjoy the benefits of all the effort that went in for the rain. Yeah. Yeah. We get to heaven, it's going to be people to get a mention that a lot of people overlook that God says, your faithfulness enabled, made it possible for these people to go on and do what God wanted them to do. Because God's ways far above our ways. God knew when he, before he made Adam and Eve, one day there's going to be a day when Noah's 500, and I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to tell him it's going to rain. I'm going to tell him how to build an ark. And he's going to go and build it. But why didn't God talk to Lamech? Because he knew Lamech wouldn't make it. He knew that Lamech's time was going to be up. He couldn't build the ark. Because if Lamech built it, Noah may not have believed in it. If Noah wouldn't have been a part of it, maybe Noah wouldn't have got into the boat when God told him to. But Lord, you sure? I'd, I haven't gone over and double-checked everything that Dad did. I don't, th I don't know that this thing's all that safe. And you can't convince me that that thing was seaworthy. Somebody never built a boat before? Going to build a boat on the first try? That's going to hold two of every animal? I believe Noah did it the way that God told him, and God just honored his faithfulness. I believe it's a miracle that the thing even floated. Now then again, Noah may have been a master craftsman of the time. Noah may have known how to do joinery and everything else. I don't know. But I do know that it floated. And if you go down and you look at how big the one down there is, and it could have been bigger. They shortchanged what a cubit was down there. We don't know how much a cubit, but they went at the lowest possible number. So it could have even been bigger than the one down there. And you're telling me after 100 years, wood isn't going to start to crack and warp a little bit? That the dew every day isn't going to saturate into the lowest ones? Then when it evaporates out, it's all warped? I believe Noah just did the best that he could, and God honored that. That's why God had to shut the door, because Noah didn't know how to seal up that door. They say, well, if we shut it, how are we going to make sure it doesn't leak? If we shut it, how are we going to seal it from the outside? God said, I got it. For 40 days, we know there's no stern or helm on this ark. If you study out how it was built. There's no front, there's no back. It's just a floating basket, essentially. It's what they put Moses in when his mama floated him down the river. They just had faith that it was going to end up where God wanted it to. Boy, where do you think Noah got that kind of faith? He learned it from his dad. Where do you think Noah learned that obedience? He got it from his dad. Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he's old, he shall not depart from it. When well, Noah was pretty old, he was 500. But for 500 years, he had watched his dad and said, you know what? I want to be faithful like him. Lamech never saw the rain, but his fingerprints were all over that boat. Maybe tears that Noah cried because the words of encouragement, a word fitly spoken, more valuable than golden apples and frames of silver. Just a word of encouragement. Noah will be reminded. Yeah, because Noah only, God only heard, Noah only heard from God once. We don't find that God spoke to him between the time that he said build it and the time that he said get into it. 
So on the days that he's down at his lowest and he's thinking, man, it'd be good to hear from God. Man, they come in and say, well, did God not tell you anything that you needed? No? Then you'll hear from him when it's time to get in the boat. Just keep on going. And he's saying, you remember back Adam and Eve, they said God could have thrown them out of the garden, but now he clothed them first. He's saying, God equipped you. He gave you everything that you needed. And when it's time, you'll hear from him. He said, well, how are we going to round up all these animals? He's saying, how long is that going to take me? Well, if God told you to build it, God will send it. He's saying, if God's going to fill it with animals, how many animals do you know of, Noah? He says, well, I know a couple of them. He says, you think that there's a chance that there's some out there that you don't know about, Noah? Yeah. Well, I think that God's going to send all of them. Because if you'd have done it, you'd have missed some. For 95 years, he's just there helping Noah along. He had paved the spiritual path, so to speak. He had been a forerunner to let him know this is how you do it. But he's just helping him every time that he can. Why? Because he's saying, I don't want to miss out on what God's doing. Who knows, they might have had one of them in case that it can't help us a few times down to the bottom of that boat. Say, no, can you believe God let you build a boat? He said, you're the first person to get, ever get to do this. He said, God chose you to do something nobody else had ever done before. Not because you're worthy of it, but because you're just obedient and you found grace in the eyes of God. Maybe Noah's saying, well, how's this all going to work out? Well, there's this one time, Noah. You, you may not remember this. You was, a little, you was a little baby. We didn't know how we were going to make it, but God made a way. Yeah. He's there and he's saying, hey, you, you remember your great, 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 great grandpappy? You probably never heard this story just on how God came through. How God provided. God took Enoch. Enoch had a family. They say, well, when God took Enoch, God provided for Enoch's family. They say, God said, you know what, Enoch, you're coming with me. But don't worry, I'll take care of them. Well, what's the point of it? We may not know. Without Lamech, no one may, may not have gotten a boat built. But I know that Noah did. I know that Lamech wasn't unrighteous or else God would have destroyed them in the flood. So that means that God knew it was going to take Noah 100 years. So we'll talk to Noah 90, you know, 100 years, 95 years before Lamech, Noah's dad dies. Why? Because he needs all that time and Lamech's help in order to make sure that he gets done. Lamech never saw the rain, but he believed it was going to come. I believe from Abraham's bosom he was watching when God sent that flood. Then he was, it may not have been God, it may have been Adam, it may have been Abel, Seth, somebody saying, hey, Lamech, your boy's just following God again. He's just doing what God told him, God honored it. Look at all the great nations that came out of Noah. All because he just did what God told him. For 500 years, Noah did what God told him. That's why he was just man perfect in his generation. <coughs> but because God honored his obedience, wouldn't he honor Lamech's obedience? Yeah, he did. He got to let him see the ark being built. Got to see his son working on something that God had personally given him. He may not have heard from God, but he knew somebody that did. He's thinking, maybe one day God's going to talk to me. And God did, by the way. Because one day Jesus went down to Abraham's bosom and preached to everybody that went down there because they had to get in the same way that we got in, through the blood. And then one day, Lamech got to see that throne in glory when Jesus led captivity captive. One day, Lamech got to see the one. He got to hear from the one that he had always wanted to be here from. So just because you don't get to see it doesn't mean you won't get to see the fruit from it. Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's any reason to give up. Because if I don't, who will? God can use anyone, but there's no guarantee that he will. There's no guarantee that if Lamech said, well, I'm, I'm going to be a stumbling block instead of a stepping stone, there's no guarantee that God would have allowed Noah to finish it or found somebody else to help Noah or if Noah would have gotten discouraged because Lamech didn't give him those words of encouragement or didn't become invested in it 
there's no guarantee that God would have chosen somebody else. He may have chosen one of Noah's sons. Could have. No guarantee that he would have. But you say, why that's important? We wouldn't be here today. We all come from Adam, but then also Noah. Because of Noah's obedience, God through the prophecies that you know, throughout the rest of the Old Testament, throughout all the promises, you know, go back three chapters. You can bruise his heel, but he'll bruise your head. What's that talking about? One day Jesus is going to come. Couldn't have happened if Noah wasn't faithful. And if Lamech's the one that helped Noah get through them hard days, Lamech's got a piece of that. So I may not see it, but I want to be as, just as involved in it. And I promise you, you get involved in it, God will bless you while you're doing it. And if you do it wholeheartedly, if you just say, Lord, I'm yours. He said, Lord, you want me to go buy stuff or no? I'll go buy stuff or no. You want me to sell the house so that we can finance that ark? We'll do it. Whatever you want, because I believe you got this all in control, and I don't want to miss out on it. Because see, Lamech got to see what God did in the ark without having to be in the ark. I'm convinced it's a pretty bumpy ride. I'm convinced it wasn't pleasant being in that thing for 40 days and 40 nights and then for the six months afterwards for the water to dry up smelling all them animals every day. But I do believe that Lamech from the outside saying, yep, God's got it right in his hand. From the other side of it, Lamech's looking and saying, hold in there, Noah. It's going to be worth it. When that thing touches down, God's going to use you to repopulate the earth. And when you out there one day just think, well, there's nobody around. Just keep walking with God. That's the only person you need. And no one knew that. But why do you know it? Because Lamech was there every step of the way with him. Till God said, Lamech, time for you to come home. And he said, no, I'll see you on the other side. Enjoy the rain. But I'm out of here. You just get involved. If you don't see the rain, so what? I want to see him. I'm convinced that Lamech got closer to God after this than he was before. Why? Because he said, you know what, God's doing something around here. So just get in. Regardless of if you ever get wet, just get in. Amen. It'll be worth it on the other side. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.